Hello NACC instructors. Today we're going to be doing a brief tutorial on looking at building your syllabus. We have a template that currently should be in your NICC emails, as well as you can access it through our Microsoft Teams faculty page, as well as the Canvas faculty page as well. So through these items, we are going to just take an overview of our syllabus and some changes that have been made starting in the summer 2021 semester. So please feel free for those of you who are familiar with this syllabus to um, to go to certain parts that we'll really highlight on to look at some new changes. One of the first things that you want to notice when you get started with your syllabus is that there are different colors on the syllabus. The black items are typically going to be your items that are um, the, the template to follow. It's going to be items that are either required or recommended for your syllabus. And then these items in green are really examples or kind of guiding pieces of info to help you put your syllabus together. So on the top section, you'll see that we have kind of the similar things we normally do, division and discipline, course title, the days and the times that your course is gonna be offered as well as the number. And then when we're talking about site and mode, what this is really looking at is if your course is blended if you have part on Microsoft Teams and part on Canvas, or it could be in person or completely on Canvas or online. So this is really what we're looking for in this section. The next item below we're gonna see is your virtual meeting link. So if you are meeting on Microsoft Teams, for example, there is a link that you can copy and paste right here. So the student, if they're having issues getting logged in through their email or through their Outlook, or through Microsoft Teams, they can also access it directly in the syllabus. You'll also see the Canvas course link here, and this is just the top website URL copied over from your Canvas course. So again, just another shortcut for them to be able to navigate between different platforms. We'll also see this is a great place to add um, pre or co-requisites, the credit hours and contact hours, and of course we have the summer 2021 semester already filled in. As we scroll down, you're going to see items including the course description. And so the course description, you can copy over from NICC's current catalog. So be sure to click this link to open it up and copy and paste over. You'll also see pages of reference, which you can scroll over to, um, jump through the PDF, but these items should match directly the numbers in the catalog based on the items on each page. As we scroll down, you'll also see, does the course meet a general education requirement? And so this is really important that our students know how the course factors into their degree program. As we scroll down, we'll also see the course textbook information. So if you are someone who has a physical textbook that you have ordered, be sure to list the name of your textbooks as well as the pickup instructions. You may also be somebody who's using an online educational resource. So something from, for example, OpenStax. This is something the students will be able to access from day one. So you wanna make sure to include the course title as well as a link to access if it is an online resource. And then another really important item that we wanna address when it comes to textbooks is to be sure that you have material for the first two weeks of class. If there is a shipping delay, if we are not able to get textbooks to the students, right away, say it's a late ad, those kind of things, we want to make sure that there's material available for the students. So being sure if you're using a certain book that less than 15% of it is scanned in for the first two weeks of class. You'll also see below there's a great options for your own contact information, office hours, if you have a recurring office hour link, as well as if you have a tutor for your course, this is a great place to list their contact info. We'll also scroll down to see course expectations, which includes the first item is our course code of conduct. And so this may be a great example if you have an online course where there are discussion forums. If you want to integrate certain statements of respect or netiquette policies, as well as if you're meeting virtually, you may also want to implement items like, please be sure that you're um, that your audio is turned off, your mic is muted when you are not talking. This is a great place to just show students kind of those, those expectations for having respect for one another and for the learning environment. 
We're also going to scroll down and see technology and communication requirements. And so what this is, is when the students are in class on day one and they view the syllabus, they know right away what technology, um, what technology platforms are required for the course. So they know, for example, in this demo course, they're going to have to access their NICC email, Canvas, and then we can see in this class, again, for example, the green, that they are going to meet virtually on Teams and have assignments on Microsoft Word. So any technology, any communication, this is a great place for the students to know that they need to get ready to use those platforms if they don't know how to use them already. And then, of course, if you have any technology issues, you do have the instructional designer's email address there, as well as the chief information officer. The next item we're going to look at is minimal time expectation out of class. So again, in this green, we can customize it, but this should be a great example of the students knowing how to structure their time in your course, not just in class, but outside as well. This can be a really valuable tool for the students to manage their time, to figure out how their calendar works, and also best times to study for that two hours a week or whatever that example is. We'll also see below that this is the section for the learning outcomes and assessment methods. And so this is something that you may be able to copy over from the last time you taught this course, as well as you may use the Nebraska Transfer Initiative, which includes the statewide syllabus, as well as learning objective requirements. So it will differ by the course that you are teaching individually, but also know that it is really important that when we are deciding learning outcomes for the class, that we are thinking about how this information may transfer if our course is on that statewide syllabi approved courses, as well as how the students, the outcomes in this course are similar to the students learning outcomes at NICC. In other words, are we thinking about how this course is factoring into their overall learning at NICC? As well as below here, you'll see some other resources that include um, looking at instructional design and different methods to, um, to, to work on your course, as well as at the very bottom, you'll see a resource which is really focusing on embedding culture, culture and cultures and indigenous representation into the curriculum. So all of these blue links you can click on for more information and to really help you get the most out of your learning outcomes, as well as your assessment methods. So with these assessment methods, we're going to scroll down and we'll see the description of these assignments, these assessments in just a second here. You'll also notice right here that there is a grading breakdown. So all of the graded material in your course, which could include attendance, participation, essays, lots of different evaluation tools. But the student should know that they can go in and say, oh, hey, here's my final paper. It's going to be 25 points out of my 100 total. So they should have a good idea of how they will be graded and how that material is weighted. And as we scroll down, we are going to see a brief description of the different assignments in the course. So be sure that of each of these categories, that it does have a general overview to help the student really think about, you know, this, this item in particular. How do I get prepared for it? And then also, what does that look like as I'm starting the course? And then as we scroll down here, we also have a little section for the late work policy, which if you are an instructor and you have that late work policy, you can add that in there, customize it for yourself. Um, but you, you may not have one in your courses either. And so this is just a great place to really have that clear to the student when it is expected that their work is submitted and if there is a late work policy, what that looks like. As we scroll down, we'll see our NICC's grading breakdown, as well as a link to the catalog. And then we also have the grading information, including, um, including voluntary withdrawals, involuntary, incompletes, You'll also see a detailed breakdown of the incomplete policy right here. And so this will be updated um, each year as well, and it will reflect the current course catalog. And again, if you are, if you do want more details, please be sure to click into the current course catalog. And as we scroll down on the bottom here, we will see that there is a, a section for services for students with special needs. And this does include um, background information 
to really be sure that your students who need that support are able to get it. And as we scroll down, we'll also see the educational access team contacts. So this will really break down how to contact representatives at each campus to be sure that your students um, who need that additional support know who to reach out to to get connected as soon as possible. Also below, you'll see some additional support resources. And so we can see right here that there is a link to the student wellness resources available on the student's orientation canvas page. We can see a link to Morningstar Counseling, and we can also see information about the Writing Help Desk and tutoring services. You'll also notice that there are three NICC Science and Math tutors, as well as TutorMuse 24 Access Tutoring Service available through your NICC Canvas. And then as we skip, as we skip down, we'll also see a no skip policy, attendance policy via NICC. And then of course, as an instructor, you can add some additional stipulations in your own attendance policy and your own tardiness policy. So again, that green area, please be sure you're customizing it to your own class. We also see items like academic progress, honesty policy, plagiarism. So be sure you're pointing these items out to the students and that they feel comfortable with that material. And then as we scroll down, we'll also see a section for Canvas, which is really looking at helping students get started. So we're gonna see, two, we're gonna see tutorials that we can click on, um, additional items for really helping the students with specific materials. Um, say a student isn't quite sure how to navigate quizzes, they can click right into this link and it will bring them to directly that, those quiz questions. And then the very last item on all of our syllabi is going to be our course schedule. So you will see to the left hand side that each week is sectioned out by the date. And so most of these are going to start on the very first day of class and then go through Sunday. So this is currently set up to be a Monday through Sunday sort schedule. But as an instructor, if you have a different format, you can definitely customize this for your own needs. We'll also see that there's reminders which are universal across our institution. For example, the last day to add, add drop classes is on June 4th, regardless of whether you are in a five week session or an eight week session. We'll also see an example of what we may look at in the first week, as well as the items that are assigned and when they're due. So these due dates are really great for the students to be able to figure out when they need to get their material in by and then each week kind of what their workload is. We can also see as we scroll down that each of these weeks are sectioned out again with those reminders. Some of these reminders may carry over from past semesters as well as we may highlight important days where offices are closed or where the semester is ended. So finals for the five week courses we can see on June, on June 2nd. You'll also notice that there it goes up to eight weeks because of the summer session. If you are somebody who has a five week course, be sure to mark this as your last date. You can get rid of these last couple weeks or you can just include no class semesters concluded. We'll also see reminders such as student course evaluations and the day to submit grades for faculty. And as we know, this disclaimer um, that our syllabus and course outline are subject to change. So as instructors, um, we will do our best to be sure to update the students and then also make sure our syllabus is as up to date as possible, posting it on the Canvas page, as well as updating the students if we are meeting in person or virtually. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email address is mmiller at the nicc.edu, and I look forward to seeing you all this summer session. Thank you.